Good morning, everybody. Hello, hello. It is Thursday, December 7th, 2023. And my name is Jennifer Cotton. I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Midlothian, Texas. And that means I teach people how to make greeting cards, scrapbook pages, gift packaging, and more with stamps, ink, paper, and lots of cool tools. Um, so good morning and welcome. Hey, Charlotte. Good morning, Julie. Good morning over on YouTube. Landa, good morning to you. Robin, good morning. Mary Ann, good morning. First thing here. Um, good to see everybody. Like I said, my name is Jennifer Cotton. I've been a Stampin' Up! demonstrator for 22 years now, since last month in November. <laughs> and um, so I do this as a full-time business. So um, along with that, I offer lots of events you can take. I offer, uh, of course, the product and everything else. So, hey, Cindy, good morning. Thanks for sharing. Ramona, thank you for sharing. Good morning. Stella, good morning. Uh, Julie, thanks for sharing. Sandy, good morning to you. Um, okay, so I, what, oh, I'm in the wrong place. Um, I will be adding timestamps to this video today. Let me just put this reminder on the screen real quick. So I'll be adding timestamps to the YouTube video later today. So you can skip around and go straight to stamping, straight to specials, straight to whatever section you see listed there. Just click more or show more. And then you will be able to um, click those links. I'll also add a link right up here tomorrow on December 8th that just takes you straight to my blog, stamptherapist.com. So you can find out all the stuff about me there. Okay. Um, so as you come on, please say hi, just like lots of people have already. Robin, thanks for sharing. Um, because that will get you entered. Where did I put the stamps up? Right here to win the three cards I'm going to make today with the Be My Valentine bundle. So this is a new bundle coming out in January and it includes a punch. And I'll of course show you more about that when I start stamping. But if you'd like to have a chance to win those cards, just um, say hi, talk to each other, ask a question, whatever you want to do, that will get you entered. And that's on YouTube and Facebook, replay and in person, live, whatever in person. Um, and then like Robin just did, she said, uh, shared. So when you share the video, click the button in YouTube or Facebook and follow the instructions and share it. Um, you'll get entered again, but only if you comment that you shared, because that's a privacy thing. I don't know most of the people that share the videos. I can't see their names. So, um, anyway, thank you guys for coming on. Of course, your thumbs up, your likes, your, uh, subscriptions, follows, all that stuff is helpful as well. So thank you very much. Hey, Linda in Mansfield. Good to see you. France, good morning. Just talking to you today, I think. <laughs> um, Shannon, good morning. Cindy, good morning. Who else? Anne. Oh, I'm sorry. Ginger in Tennessee, 22 degrees. Woo. What's happening in Tennessee? <laughs> Lori, good morning. Oh, Robin, your first time here. Awesome. Thank you very much. Um, oh, I was going to say about the 22 degrees. It's only 40 something here. Oh, it's 54 already. And it's going to get up to 70 today here in Texas, where I live in like closer to Dallas. Um, okay. I'm checking my notes. So I'm going to tell you guys about my upcoming events. So I offer tons of events. Anyone in the United States can take to go. They're all offered to go, but some are also offered in person. And, um, all of my events are going to include a PDF tutorial. We cut die cut punch and emboss everything possible, except, uh, when otherwise stated in the instruction in the registration. Um, you will cut your own designer paper and kit components. And then, of course, you get the PDF tutorial, but anyone in the world can take the PDF tutorials. Um, sorry, I'm just reading my graphic. It's kind of confusing. But anyone in the world can take the tutorials, but only in the U.S. You can take the actual class for Stampin' Up! policy. Okay, so coming up next or coming up is my four monthly classes, card class, scrapbook class, stamp a stack and sampler class. Um, the, so card and scrapbook 
you need to register by December 14th. We're having these in person on December 16th and mailed to go on December 18th. These are not holiday themed classes, by the way. That's so they're so late. <laughs> uh, ooh, Robin 34 and snow flurries till noon. Oh my goodness. We're not at the snow flurries level yet by any means here. Carol, good morning. Love all the purple hearts. Um, Mary Jo, good morning. And Lori in Minnesota liked and shared. Thank you. And then over here, Pat, good morning. Tommy, good morning. Thanks for sharing, Pat. Good to see you guys. Thanks for the hearts. Um, okay, so card class. Register by December 14th while supplies last. It's four cards for $15 free with a $20 order. And we're using using Simply Sparkling Bundle and Garden Meadow Bundle. They're two online only products. And then scrapbook, same deadlines, same stuff and uh, same price. And it's three 12 by 12 pages. We make two that match, one that doesn't match, and then we make the matching one the following month or vice versa, however it works out. So you end up with a four page spread if you come two months in a row. And <laughs> um, we are using Light the Sky Bundle and Sparkling Snowflakes Bundle for winter pages and New Year's pages. So that's the info on those. And then I have my two clubs that you can join. Stamp A Stack Club, which is cards and sampler club. I have sneak peeks of both here. I actually made the sampler, uh, stamp a stack cards last week on the live. So you can go back and watch that. Um, I want you to know on all of my classes, we have, uh, we're very meticulous about making straight cuts, precise, um, not having you miss a piece of cardstock that you need. Um, we try, if you need scrap paper, we try to make sure it is the right size to fit everything on. We give you a guide for that. We're just very um, attention to detail on our classes. And then I don't, of course, have any classes here bundled up that I can show you, but um, we package them up very thoughtfully as well. So they're going to be in, not in a confusing order. It's pretty, pretty obvious to figure out what piece you need for what. Um, as well as the step-by-step -step instructions have those measurements on there and they're very detailed as well. Um, so that goes for these clubs. Um, each club includes over $20 in merchandise a month. There, um, if you get designer paper that's 12 by 12, which you almost always do, it will come in the 12 by 12 format. We don't cut it in half. Um, it might be half a pack, so you'll get six 12 by 12 sheets. Uh, which makes for easier, um, like my stamp -a stack is 12 cards. You're making three each of four designs. So um, you can get the pieces you need for all of your cards. Here's the stamp -a stack cards and still have leftovers um, and not have to worry about the direction of the pattern. We always think about that when we design. Oh, we is me on the designing. <laughs> um, so this is stamp -a stack. You're going to make three of this card three of this one. Again, you will cut your designer paper, we'll cut and emboss the rest. Of course, you'll die cut out the flowers, for example, simply because um, you have to stamp those first and you could hand cut as well. Uh, this is translucent florals bundle. You make four of, three of those, sorry, and three of this one. Okay, so that's stamp -a stack Club. It is $35 for club members. You have to join by December 10th or $37 if you only want to just take the class and no club. Um, but of course, if you join the club, you get periodic gifts from me. Almost every single month, you get a little gift from me. And after six consecutive months, you get $25 in free merchandise of your choice. Um, so I think that's what I need to say about stamp -a stack And then Sampler Club, I really like how this one turned out this month. Um, we're always make a 12 by 12 sampler. This is a winter sampler. I think it turned out really pretty using the sparkling snowflakes bundle and the snow crystal stamp set. I did also throw in one little splatter stamp, which you, we all have some splatter stamp in our stamping collection that you can use. That's on one little square. Um, so 12 by 12, over 20 in merchandise. PDF tutorial is $35, 37 if you don't want to join the club. So register for those by December 10th, December 10th. And then 
uh, in-person retreats. So we had to change our June retreat location and it holds less people. So it, June is now full, but you can sign up for the, goodness, again, my graphics are all out of order. You can sign up for the March, uh, where's the date? March 28th retreat in Temple, Texas. Now um, you'll get your eight foot table, meals, gifts, $50 goodie bag, 10 or more make and takes, a bed to sleep in, you know, all that stuff and uh, get to hang out with lots of other crafters. This is near um, Austin, Texas. Well, it's about an hour, I think, from Austin, Texas. And we will offer this one to go as well, but you can still register for that for in person in March. Join April McCray and I, we do the retreats together. We're actually planning and we're getting together this weekend to work on our Simply Spoiled crafting cruise, um, which is happening in January. We're hoping to get some designing done, but also just planning out uh, everything, gifts and all that stuff. And anyway, what was I going to say about April? Oh, the cruise will be offered to go as well. So that's an upcoming event. Um, if you could not register and, and go on the crafting cruise, we'll offer it to go. Okay. Um, so the next cruise you can join us on is January 26, 2025. We do have people registering for this cruise already. Um, and you want to do that so you can pay it out over a year. That's the best thing. You can make a $10 payment, a $50 payment, a $500 payment, whatever, until the deadline around, I think, October of next year. Um, so January 26, 2025, anyone can go use our group rates. That's not what you need. This is just some pictures from our last crafting cruise. Um, use our group rates to be able to craft uh, sale for cheaper, including for your friends who are not crafters. So anyone can go on the crafting cruise and then whoever selects to add on the crafting portion can do that. But that is optional for everyone who uses our link there. Um, six classes are included, half a table to crop on throughout the week. It's just, it's a ton of fun. Gifts, bag, etc. Um, Sandy, we have high in the low 50s today and tomorrow. That's not too bad, right, Sandy? Um, Lori, thanks for sharing and good morning. Let's see who's here. That's weird. It just says Facebook user and there's no comment. Let me show you. Where's the comment? <laughs> um, Robin in Levittown, Pennsylvania. Pam, good morning to you. Thank you, Robin. Donna, good morning in Cary, North Carolina. Um, okay, so what else? Cruises. And then I just have my upcoming events that I don't have registration links set up for yet. My goal was to have those today, like yesterday. I didn't get it done. So they're coming soon. But um, my new catalog kickoff January 13th in person and to go. So mark your calendars. And then when the link comes out, you can register Paper share party, January 27th. Alejandra and I have pretty much every detail worked out. We literally just have to get in our computers and set up the registration link. You can do paper, the share only, and get a sampling of every new paper from our new mini catalog um, and ribbon. Or you can add on the party for only $20 extra and get eight make and takes, half designed by Alejandra Gomez, half by me. Uh, it includes a Facebook party, all kinds of stuff. So, so save your registration for our paper share. We give you six by 12 paper, not six by six, six by 12. We thoughtfully, um, Landa always looks and thoughtfully cuts it in half so that hopefully you get the best use out of your half <laughs> that you receive. Anyway, so January 27th on that. Jen and Jen Camp, February 24th. That is Genevieve Co. in Canada. So if you do live in Canada, this is one event you can take. You'll just register through Genevieve. And I believe we're using the uh, hot air balloons. I forgot what they're called for our stamp camp. Plus, we'll have two optional add-on classes. The Mega Cruise Retreat in a Box is coming in January, like I mentioned. And March 14th, Demonstrator Event in Houston, Texas. Okay. Okay. Uh, so that's for demonstrators only. But if you know about that, you know about that. 
Um, and then one last event, I think, yes, to talk about is this is a demonstrator training. So if you're a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I, Alejandra Gomez, and Genevieve Co. are offering a training you can take to get you ready for celebration, our big sale that starts in January. Um, we will each do training videos, plus we have three guests doing training videos. And we have, uh, we'll issue challenges, like it will be a very thorough training. That's all happening on December 15th, but it's all recorded, so no need to be present at that moment. And then on December 20th, we'll have a live Zoom where we will answer your questions. And you can submit the questions if you cannot be there on December 20th. So this is the Jumpstart Your Celebration training. You have until December, hmm, I think, 14th to register. And then where you get with your fee PDF tutorials for 12 cards. They are, where are mine? Uh, I have to grab mine. I just made mine yesterday. Um, using the Stippled Roses bundle, the Trusty Tools bundle, and the Bright Skies bundle. They're and then we're using celebration items in there as well. So if you haven't seen the new, sorry, I stepped away from my microphone. Hold on. If you have not seen the new catalog yet, here's a sneak peek of some products and projects. So <clears throat> to clarify, if you're a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, you can register for this event. You'll get the 12 tutorials to make those eight cards plus these <clears throat> four cards, that's 12 total. Um, you can add on the make and take packet and then you'll get that training as well. Um, and we do have an option just to take the make and takes as well, but you do have to be a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Okay, so here are my four cards. I really like them. I hope you guys do too. And yeah, so register for that by December 15th. And if you live in Canada, you can still register for... Uh, the training through Genevieve Co. as well, and I can get you that link. Okay. Um, and anyone else, just a side note, because I've had this question, if you live in the UK or something and you want to take the training, you can. You just cannot add on the make and takes. And you register through me, and we will, I mean, the, the magic of the credit card system will convert the payment to your amount. <laughs> um, Lori, fifth, close to 50 today and tomorrow. Usual for Minnesota, but I'll, oh, is it usual or unusual? Because you said, but I'll take it. Um, yeah, because that doesn't sound too cold for Minnesota. Okay, I think I talked about all the upcoming events. I hope I said everything. I hope it made sense. Um, I do have um, lots of stuff to share when I point the camera down as well, and then we'll get started stamping. Um, Unusual, Lori. Exactly. That's what I figured. Yes. This is usual here in Texas. It might be. In fact, it's supposed to be colder this weekend. I don't know how cold, but it could be freezing today and 80 tomorrow. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, okay. So I have a new ordering special. I'm going to tell you all about that when we do the stamping portion, because those are the cards I'm going to make today. Um, we have so, oh, yeah. I want to remind you to get your last chance products from the holiday catalog. They're really starting to sell out now. The bear punch is gone. Um, there was something else I noticed this morning that I was like, oh, well, the stamp set, you know, the above it all with the now I forgot what we called it, but the the Skyliner type thing. Crap. What's it called? <laughs> like a ski lift thing. Anyway, that stamp set's gone. Um, sold out, sold out. Let me look real quick. The bear punch. What was the other thing I noticed? Maybe that was it. There was something else. Oh, um, maybe those are the two things. There's other stuff sold out, but that was what caught my eye. So that sale or uh, it's not a sale, but that while supplies last ends, I believe January 3rd and then January Fourth, I'm trying to read this. Um, this catalog starts. So if you want anything from that holiday catalog, get it now. And then January 4th, you can get stuff from these two catalogs. Um, unless you're a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you get it right now. Okay, so what else do I have? I 
feel like I'm regretting how I set up this table. And I'm going to try to move this stuff real quick. Okay, so I'm going to point the camera down here in a sec after I move these. I don't want to see that part. And I'm going to share some projects real quick, and then I'll share some other stuff. So excuse how it's kind of a mess, but it always is. Okay, so I'm going to point the camera down. And um, first, I have some cards I received in the mail. And I actually know from my informed delivery that I have lots of cards sitting in the mailbox for me. <laughs> um, so I'm sure there's lots more beautiful Christmas cards to for me to see the lighting is weird but uh these are two two or three here cards that i've received recently I don't know why that's all dark um this gorgeous card is from trisha i believe yes christmas card gorgeous i'm trying to show you all those details because the lighting is weird and then this one is from judy nice large card um thank you judy so much Terry, good morning. Um, and this was from Elaine, just thanking me for uh, a thing we did as a demonstrator thing. Thank you, Elaine. Um, so those are some cards I received recently, but I'll have a lot more to show next week, I'm sure, due to um, what informed delivery is telling me in my mailbox. Okay, and then this past weekend, I have my demonstrator team party. I'm gonna need to see those lines so I can make it straight. I have my demonstrator team party and uh, it was awesome. We do it in person, but partly online as well for those who are uh, long distance. And we always have a card swap. Again, we have people do the card swap long distance and in person, some mail them in, et cetera. So these are the card swaps from the team party. So I'm just gonna, gonna show you. Uh, this one uses new product from the new catalog, which is actually a masculine stamp set with tools. Let's see here. Betsy made this one, of course. It's so gorgeous. Um, so, yeah, that was one of our card swaps. This one uses the bundle I'm using today, the Be My Valentine. And let's see if you know, I don't have a name. And that party was, of course, not crazy, but like I was very busy. So I didn't. If you didn't put your name on the back, I don't know. This was from Lisa Hansen. When you do the card swaps with team stuff, um, you make, like, I think we had 10 or 12. So you make that number of cards and then you get back one of each. Um, so this was from Lisa Stevens. Gorgeous. This is from Elaine, I remember, because she dropped them at my house because she couldn't make it to the event. Love the brushes. Yes, girl, those paint brushes are gorgeous. Who said that? Pat, yes. Um, Adele made this one. Get out so we can see it without, uh, you know, it being blocked. And then this is, no, I don't think I have a name there. <laughs> The Gorgeous Fish. Who is this? Oh, that is um, Christine. Christine. Love it. This is Linda. So this card, it just has a lot of um, intricate things in it, I guess. I can't think of the word. So it's like a square. This is Linda, as I mentioned. And you can sort of, no, I'm gonna, oh yeah, you can sort of just stand it up on your table like this. And then you can prop this up. And it's just like a little pretty piece of art. And, and it is using some of the stamps from the Be My Valentine plus like the wreaths from the annual catalog. It's the Be My Valentine paper. It's gorgeous. And then this is, oh, sorry, one more here before that last one. I don't think there's a name. Yes, Mary Ann. So it stands up like that. And then look how cute. <laughs> so cute. And last but not least, this was the winner. Everybody at the meeting slash party gets to vote. And this was Robin's card. And they voted hers the winner. So there we go. So awesome party. 
Um, we also had our gift exchange, as you guys may have seen, um, I posted on my uh, Facebook business page. I posted pictures of the gift exchange. And this is the one that I won. So not the one I made, but the one I won. I think Lisa Stevens made this one. And it's gorgeous. So I just wanted to give that a little, a little uh, more love here on the video. And, but now it's going, now that I've shown it to you guys in person, it's going to go on my wall in the living room, which I need to post a picture of. It is a wall of all handmade Stampin' Up. Um, handmade Stampin' Up. What's the word I'm looking for? Art. Art. Uh, Christmas art. Christmas art. Okay. This is my thank you card for my online orders this month. So I just wanted to show it. We totally copied this off Pinterest and... Karen made those for me, but it's really pretty with the translucent florals. Um, and then these were the meeting party make and takes. So even if you don't live local, you can still take those, take it to go and get the packet mailed to you. It includes a partial roll of ribbon, partial embellishment and everything cut, die cut, punch and emboss. Um, that's the garden meadow bundle that we're using in my card class this month as well. So just wanted to show those again. If you're in the team, it's 10 bucks for the make and takes, add shipping if needed. And you can, um, you know, get that really inexpensive make and take packet each month. Okay, the next thing I'm going to show is this glass mat. So, yes, uh, two days ago, I guess. You can definitely see my lights in there. Um, Stampin' Up! demonstrators were allowed to pre-order from the new catalogs, these two right here. And that means we could really order every single thing we wanted from this book. There's limits, but there's no limitation. So every single thing from this book and get free with every $50 or $100 spent, every single thing from this book. So I have an entire box sitting over here to the side of stuff I ordered, which I will be uh, hopefully using this weekend to get some designing done. But I'm not going to do that video today where I show that stuff just due to time. Um, but one of the things we could order is in this celebration brochure. It is this glass mat studio. So this is going to be exclusive. Um, hey, Debbie, good morning. It's beautiful. I know. Um, this will be exclusive to... First of all, demonstrators right now, if you're a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, you can get this now. And if you're not, you can get it with our starter kit in January for free. Um, I'm just reading my notes right now to make sure I didn't skip anything. Okay, I think I'm good. So I'm going to move these notes out of my way. Um, okay, so it's a glass mat studio. First of all, just I put these here to show you when it comes packaged up with these little corner protectors. And I would recommend keeping those just for travel, packing it away, etc. It came in a cardboard box. I probably will not keep the box, but here's the box it came in. Um, and then those, and it was wrapped in plastic, of course. It also had this little foam, which I won't be keeping. I just wanted to show you on all four sides. So it was really well protected when it came in the mail. And then again, you might want to keep these little corner pieces. They're real sturdy, sort of soft plastic um, to protect those corners for travel and stuff. Okay, it's raised up from the table. Um, it's glass, so raised up because of that. Plus it is, um, that has little, not feet, but little grippy. Let me show one there. It has those, I guess they are feet. Sorry, that's blurry. Look at the bottom one. So there's four of those, which raise it up a little bit more. Um, of course, it has the Stampin' Up! logo, and it has some really pretty flowers here in the bottom corner. It has the ruler, um, inches here, centimeters here on the corner and the corner. Oh my gosh, the camera. Um, so there's, sorry, if I don't raise it up, you can see it. So inches. And of course, if you live in another country where metric is predominant, it'll be reversed. Um, it's $60. 
but it's free with the starter kit in January. Um, it also comes with this sort of silicone grippy accessory. So you can place that anywhere you want. I found yesterday when I started using this that I liked it here in the corner this direction, but that was just me because I wanted as much stamping space as I could have. And I also found that I wanted my silicone mat on here, big, my silicone craft sheet, because I didn't want to get adhesive on my glass mat just to have the trouble to have to clean it off. Um, it's a great stamping surface. It is heat resistant, so you can heat emboss right on top of it. The printing is under the glass, so these markings are not going to rub off. Um, of course, it's very sturdy. It comes also with this cleaning cloth, which you can see I've already used because I um, was stamping yesterday on it. And you just get this wet in the sink, squeeze it out, and it's ready to go with your wiping down your stamps, your glass, etc. cetera. Uh, excess ink you've used on here because you can just mix inks on here for painting. You can mix inks in this thing, et cetera. Um, and then you just rinse it in the sink. It's like our chamois, but much thinner. So it does dry out a lot faster. And I just happen to have this little container in my room that I got at Target a long time ago. And so that is really nice to keep my wet cloth in. Um, I will not store that in a sealed bag because it could get moldy. This mat is 14 inches by 17, so 14 by 17. What else do you, <laughs> Pat, you haven't opened yours yet? I can't believe it. Um, it's sort of a, to me, it's like a green tint on the background, like a really super light green tint. And then the print is in gray. Um, and then this piece here, so this is for lots of things. You can mix inks on it. Yes, it will stain. That's how art looks. <laughs> you can also mix the inks on the glass if you prefer. Um, what am I looking for? Uh, these little squares, you can mix inks. So you have your little palettes here. But you can also stick your stampin' spots in there and it holds them really strong. Like they really are not going to fall out. Um, you can kind of wipe off your brushes on this more, more uh, I can't think of the word, textured part. There's like texture there, that pattern you see. Um, I was just setting my ink pads there yesterday. I actually ended up stacking them because I was using several. Um, and I would just bring the one to the top that I needed. I don't know if that's the smartest thing to do, but that's what I was doing. Because again, I had it over here like this. And you can just remove this if you don't want to use it. Um, but, and I wanted all this stamping space. And then, uh, this is washable, of course. Just take it over to the sink and rinse it out. It just will stain because it's white. Do y'all have any questions? I think that is, are the main things about it. Let me read my notes. Um, oh, you can cut on it. So like with our take your pick tools, let me just show you right here. Um, it's not, you know, you can cut on it. So you'll be able to do that. Uh, there's, of course, the take your pick tool, crafter tips. There's a hobby blade and this perforated blade. So you can use it for that. Um, so yeah, really nice. And it gives you that work area where you're like, no, <laughs> other stuff. You're not allowed to encroach on my area. I'm going to keep you on the outer rim and only paper and, and ink here. I did keep my stamps off of it yesterday when I was stamping. Um, so for videos, um, you can see this light, these lights I have here because they're right above it. So you, you know, if you're a demonstrator and you're worried about that, you'll have to figure that out. I'm sure I could like put a filter up there or something. Um, oh, and you can use the grid just like we use our paper grid paper to align your stamps, um, when you mount them. So like you can... Use the grid to make these words, for example, straight. And then what I have always done with the grid paper, too, is um, use the straight edge, left, right, top, bottom. It doesn't matter. 
of my clear block to align with any of the grid marks. So I'm gonna pull this down so I can be closer. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna look, because this is easiest for me at this bottom edge with a grid mark here and make it straight with that. And now that stamp should be mounted nice and straight. Um, you can even do that with the red rubber ones. It's just a slightly more, uh, you know, slightly trickier. If you get ink on here, wipe it off. It's going to come off on your paper because it's water-based. So if you get ink on there, wipe it off. You can, of course, put scratch paper on here when you're stamping off. That's what I choose to do. I don't like to get ink on here for stamping purposes. Um, because it, I'm going to end up setting a piece of paper or even my hand in that and it coming off on it. Okay, I hope that all makes sense. Stella can't wait for hers. Cute holder for your take your pick tool. Mary Jo, I sell those. Uh, my sale just, my sale where they were discounted just ended Monday, I believe, um, for the take your pick tool holder. Um, so, but I sell them with the crafter tip tools and a take your pick tool holder. Then this comes with it. So we make these here at my house. Well, I don't make it at all, but somebody does. <laughs> um, so at, so you can message me privately for more info on that. I'm going to remove this spot because I don't need it. And we're going to look at what we're going to use on our projects today now. So... Cindy, what? Oh, so sorry. I can extend it. You just won't get it as fast. I can extend the sale. Um, I have to get these cards in the mail today. They came late yesterday afternoon. I have a Tim Holtz one. I have been using a glass map, but will get moved next to me and now use this one. Woohoo. Let me see. I can't read names. Pat. Pat, Pat, Pat said all that. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so awesome. Let's see. I'm trying to see if I missed anything. Linda in Idaho. Good morning. Question. You'll send me a question on Messenger. Landis arrives today. Oh, yes, because Pat's addressing Christmas cards. No problem, Cindy. The tools love the brushes. I'm trying to see if I missed anybody. Sue, good morning. <laughs> Janet in Chile, North Carolina. Woohoo. Okay, hopefully I didn't miss anybody. Susan, good morning. Okay, so today I'm using the Be My Valentine, but um, oh, by the way, I'm sorry. I did mean to say this. If you want this mat now and you're not a Stampin' Up demonstrator, you can get it now. Um, you join my team, it's $99. You pick 125 in any current merchandise you want. But currently, current merchandise means for demonstrators, this entire catalog and this glass mat. So this is $60. You could put part of your $125, put that towards part of the 125. So 60 minus 125, you'd have whatever left. And you could get that. Get it that way, I should say. Or you can get the starter kit. You get 125 of whatever you want. And then um, go turn around and purchase it like I did for $60 minus your discount. It counts towards host benefits and celebration free with $50 purchase, which is not ever part of the starter kit, but a purchase, yes. Um, so you could purchase it through yourself, get your discount, get your free celebration item, mix any other products you want with it, clearance items mini catalog, annual catalog, holiday catalog sale, like you can mix and match all the stuff. So hopefully that all makes sense. So you can get the glass mat now if you're not a demonstrator. And then also you can get it in January at a dis, uh, not at a discount, free with the starter kit purchase for $99, pick 125 and get that free. So lots of ways to get that if you're not a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. If you are a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, FYI, um, the quantities in the pre-order could be limited. So get it sooner rather than later. Sooner rather than later. It is a great deal. Yes, <laughs> Pat's like, join our team. We are fun. <laughs> right, Pat? Me and Pat bring the party. <laughs> um, 
Uh, Kathy, ooh, it's a lot to go back over the whole glass mat thing, but it's a work surface. You'll see me use it today. Um, so yeah, I hate to say that, Kathy, but you may have to go back and watch the just that part, like skip to it. Don't watch, you don't have to watch the whole beginning. Um, but you'll see it today while I'm working. But it's a new work surface that's available from Stampin' Up. And uh, you and it by the way is a temporary product. It's not like it's going to be um sold later so it'll be available only temporary um susan i don't have the number but if you go to the demonstrator homepage and go to the search bar and put glass mat it'll come up immediately that's how i ordered mine i didn't have the number either uh also it's posted in our team facebook group susan the number is okay be my valentine I think I showed this already on a previous video because demonstrators could order it a long time ago. We were, there was a whole thing where we could order it super early and I did. And um, it's a photopolymer stamp set. It is 24 stamps. There is like an, a solid oval to make a B stamp. And then there's like two stripes and a little stinger, real thick solid to stamp on top of it in black. There is a heart that can also be wings. So, and then there's a matching punch. So you can punch out the body of the bee with the stinger. You can punch out the large heart, which is also bee wings and a small heart as well. So there's a solid heart stamp. And then there's um, basically like a two wing, uh, two, I can't think of the words, it's lines outlining the wings, um, kind of double lines there. So that can be stamped on top of the solid heart or separately to, and then punch out with the heart punch to make the bee wings. Okay, so I'm just describing the stamps here. There are a couple of different super solid stems with leaves on them. One's a little taller, one's a little shorter uh, that you can stamp and make flowers. And then there's two different flower images, more of a daisy, more of a Tulip, again, these are fully solid. There's no line art. There's no coloring. You just stamp it in whatever coloring you're done. There's a hexagon, one, two, three, four, five, six hexagons in an odd pattern. Um, so your honeycomb image, basically, that stamp. There's three, no, four different little faces to put on the bee. They look like little emoji faces. So smiley face, winky face with mouth open smiley face with eyes closed and this one that to me looks like it's really mad but it's like side eye with a straight mouth <laughs> oh and there yeah i said that anyway that one to me looks mad what do y'all think um hey by the way shirley good morning uh uh what was wrong with my thing julie they need more embellishments in the b mine um awesome kathy awesome thank you no problem, Susan. And good morning, Martha. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, what else? We have I named those. There's also a little very small three heart image, the small solid heart to stamp and punch out. There are antenna, which I'll show you how to punch those out when we start stamping. And then the words, love you, you make my heart buzz, happy Valentine's Day, be mine, B-E-E. -E. I love you no matter what, and you're as sweet as honey. Okay, so there's the stamp, uh, the, the set. And then the punch is the uh, three images total. The B, which also looks like a word bubble, the body, um, the large heart and the small heart or wings. Okay, and then um, this is part of the suite in the catalog, which we're not allowed to open the book on camera yet and show you the pages. But if you go to that page, like the suite, like I think um, Julie was saying, they need more <laughs> embellishments in the B suite. <laughs> but this is what we have. Um, we have these little adhesive backed hearts and flowers. So they're adhesive backed. They're sort of resin looking. They're shiny. And there's hearts of two sizes, flowers of two sizes. I didn't write the colors on here, but it's like Poppy Parade, Petal Pink, Daffodil Delight, and Pool Party, pretty sure. And they're sticky back. You just peel and stick. I'm actually not using those today. Um, and then I am using this ribbon. It's the Sweet Sorbet Bordered Ribbon. 
it is one fourth of an inch wide. So it's sweet sorbet in the middle and white bordered edges. And it's sort of, I don't know the word, but it's textury. It's not like smooth, like silk or something, um, but it's real nice. It's very thin, very easy to tie in a bow, which I'll be tying multiple bows today, but super easy to tie in a bow. Just a really nice quality ribbon. So that's in there. Um, by the way, that's what you'll get free with a $50 purchase from me through the 15th. Um, also not using today, and I know I showed these already on the other video, the square pillow boxes. All of this is available January 4th, or if you're a Stampin' Up! demonstrator today. today. If you get the starter kit, you can add it to your starter kit today. Um, these square pillow boxes come with adhesive on them. You just peel. Well, you fold on all the score marks, peel, stick. They're very easy to put together. And here is my hand next to it. It's pretty large. You can put a lot of candy in there. And then the designer paper. So I think I have one of each design here. Um, again, I showed this on another video, so I'm not going to go into crazy detail. But, oh no, you're going to Costco today, bro. Good luck. Good luck. Actually, I'm sending Scott to Costco today, too, for me, for one thing. Um, anyway, Costco around Christmas time is scary. <laughs> um, okay, the sheet is white, and it's covered with little jars of honey, different sizes and shapes. Some have the lid on, some off. They have a little cloth top. Some have a heart on them. Some have handwriting that looks like it says honey, but really it's too small to read, etc. Super cute. And then the back is just... Poppy Parade with little white, tiny buzz, swirly buzz lines all over. So dotted lines, like the, I mean, uh, flight patterns. Uh, this next one is white with lots of, I believe that is a uh, parakeet party. Nope, oh, lemon lime twist, a prominent lemon lime twist leaves, stems and leaves all over it. And then little bees much smaller than the stamp set bees flying in different directions, little smiley faces with closed eyes on them, and uh, poppy parade and petal pink flowers. And in the back of that one is petal pink with a white, small honeycomb pattern. Then we have this one. It's white base with red, uh, poppy parade hearts, small hearts all over, and then medium-sized bees holding hearts in different ways. Super cute. So cute. Back of that is just white with a Daffodil Delight sort of um, plaid pattern. Each line is three lines, then skip some space, three lines, and it makes even white squares in the middle. And then a sheet of basic white that has small, really small bees all over flying in different directions, left or right with the little blue like pool party um, flight lines, dotted flight lines going from their back, <laughs> curly flight lines and little tiny red hearts all over. This piece is pop is uh, petal pink with small, really small, tiny, two different sizes of poppy parade hearts all over. And then this one is basic white base with uh pool party flowers all over, little lemon lime twist leaves, small petal pink hearts, and bees all over holding flowers, poppy parade flowers. The back is really pretty. It's just a white, I mean, it's pretty. it is poppy parade with little white sort of daisy flowers all over it with a yellow center. Really small, tiny flowers, fourth inch flowers. And then this one, last one is white with little groupings of three tulip style flowers all over in an even pattern. And each grouping is a petal pink, poppy parade and pool party flower with a lemon lime twist stems and leaves and little tiny, tiny hearts in between in pool party, poppy and petal. And then the back is petal pink, white and uh, poppy parade stripes that are like hand painted on about an eighth of an inch thick each. Okay, that's the Be Mine 12 by 12 designer paper. So all these products, as I mentioned, are available starting 
January 4th, or if you're a demonstrator now. Or if you get the starter kit now. Okay, so supplies for card number one. Uh, by the way, this is my online ordering special for December. Hey, Nora. Good morning. Marcella shared. Thank you. Cold Maryland. Marcella. Cindy shared. Thank you. Um, let me real quick let you know, if you place an online order with me in December 2023 of $25 or more with this host code you see on the screen, you will receive from me a free class packet mailed in January, and it will be to make four cards. <laughs> uh, thank you, Lori. I appreciate that. Yes. Uh, I, she says, I can listen and look over when I need to see it. I love that, Lori. I do that too on people's videos. I'm like, yes, I like this. I can just listen. I got a good description. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me look and see what she said, <laughs> what she's talking about. Um, so thank you, Lori. I appreciate that. Um, Cindy, thank you very much. Cindy's like, I already ordered. Okay, so sorry. Free class packet. $25 or more with the host code gets you the class packet. 50 or more also gets you a full roll of that sweet sorbet ribbon. Um, if you do go to 150 or more, you're going to get host benefits. So in that case, don't use the host code. I'll still give you those two gifts. Plus, you'll receive at least $15 in free merchandise from Stampin' Up. Um, so these cards I'm going to make today are the cards that will be free with your purchase. Always bugs me that I feel like my camera looks like it's at a odd angle. Maybe that's a, like it's bigger up here and smaller down here. Do y'all know what I mean? I don't know why. Anyway, whatever. I can't, ugh, can't fix it. Uh, so your class packet will look something like this, but it'll have four cards. It'll be in a cellophane bag, you know, and you might have an accessory or something. If you didn't get the free ribbon, we'll cut the ribbon for you, all that stuff. So it'll look something like this. And in the front here, I have these scraps that are for all of the cards. So there's the scraps for all of the cards. And then here's the first card I'm going to make. Okay. And then I have it, my examples here for me, which will be in the photograph, like I said, of the instructions of how we used these scraps. This is the most efficient way to stamp them and use them. All right, let's just pull this down so I'll know where my top edge is. Boom. Um, like that. Anyway, I'll stamp those as I need them though today. Okay, so card number one, card one. The card base is Poppy Parade, five and a half by eight and a half. You take your eight and a half by 11 cardstock. Where is my balloon folder? And fold it in half. Oh, there it is. Hello. Um, eight and a half by 11 and fold it in half and you will uh, cut it in half. I'm sorry. And you will get a card that fits into the invitation size envelope. Boom. So eight and a half by 11, cut it in half at five and a half or four and a fourth, fold it in half, fits into the invitation size envelope. So anyone can make cards. Super easy. That was the biggest thing when I joined Stampin' Up, I didn't know it. First of all, I did not know anything about card making. Wrong bone folder. And, or nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> and uh, I was like, oh my gosh, how are you going to figure out what envelope you need? And blah, blah, blah. And then, of course, someone told me, you cut it in half. It'll fit into the size we sell. Medium invitation size envelopes. I was like, oh, okay, that's easy. And economical. So I'm getting two cards out of one piece of paper. Anyway. That's my card base. This will be portrait up and down, and we'll put that aside. And then next is the other pieces you'll need for this card. So we have a, oh, I'm sorry, I lied. Not finished. On this card, I'm going to take the front and fold it back all the way to the left in half with my bone folder. So it will be a Z fold card. So it will open like this. So it's super easy to make. Again, any beginner crafter person can make it, but it looks fancy to your friends. Okay, then we have a piece of basic white. I'm going to put all the measurements for these cards on the uh, blog at 11 a.m. Central today. So that's stamptherapist.com. 
I'm going to try to read Cindy's comment. The bee's body looks like it could probably be used as a dialogue bubble. Exactly. The, I don't know about stamping it. I mean, I guess you could. It'd just be an oval. But um, definitely the punch. Definitely the punch, which we're doing on one of the cards today, actually. <laughs> um, so, yes, I agree. Okay, where was I? This piece right here, this white measurements on the blog, is going to go inside the card. So, it'll show on the front like that. Then I have a piece of the designer paper to go on the front left flap. Measurements on the blog, 11 a.m. Central, stamptherapist.com. So this is the piece that is white background with the bees that have, are holding little hearts all over it. Then I have two pre die cut pieces, a basic white label and a poppy parade banner. Banner is from Stylish Shapes Dies. And of course, that awesome oval, uh, sorry, uh, rectangle label with the corners rounded and Pierce Marks is from the Nested Essentials dies. That is the largest die from that, but I put the measurements on the blog and the largest banner die as well. Let me see what color inks I need for this card. Black, petal pink. Sweet sorbet. I think that's it. Okay. Okay. Let me stamp my greeting first. So I can put a sweet sorbet pad there. That might not work for every configuration you have your stamping, just FYI. And you'll always be the one for me. That's what this card is going to say. I need that. I need the bee's body. The winky face with the open mouth smiley face. Um, antenna. The heart and the outline of the wings. I think those, oh no. And the small heart. The large heart and the small heart. All right. I think those are all the stamps I'm using for this card. And I just took my hand in the ink pad. So let me grab this. This uh, chamois that comes with the glass mat and wipe my hand on there. I think I mentioned this already, but this chamois does dry out. It's not like crazy fast, but I went in and, and wet it and squeezed it out this morning about 10 minutes before 9. And it's almost 10 o'clock now, so almost uh, right at an hour. And this corner is starting to dry up. So just for your information. Okay, my greeting is going to go at the bottom of this white rectangle in a portrait mode. You'll always be the one for me. So you'll then always be is under that in cursive. And then the one for me, the one. And then under that for me, um, those are all the other words are like typewriter print. That's all I'm going to stamp on that. I lied. I need another stamp for this card. I think this card uses the most stamps. Um, I'm not actually stamping on that banner. Then I'm going to stamp on this white inside piece. Grab my scratch paper. This is the scratch paper from my team event when we had a Stampin' Up! gathering recently. Anyway, um, so I'm going to use Memento Black ink. And this one you can actually press harder on. You want to be gentle on our other stamp pads. And these are the little buzzy flight lines. It's dotted. It, it curls over itself at one point. And I'm stamping these lines in black on the right hand side going down. So I'll stamp it about three times. And I have the scratch paper here because I will be going off the edges onto my scratch paper. So that's along the right edge of that so that it will show on the right hand side when the card is open. I mean closed. Here on here. Hmm. Yep. 
Okay, then I'm gonna grab my scraps. I'm stamping for this card. I need, actually, I'm just gonna stamp what I need for the cards right now. Because I think this would be best if you get this class packet from me to go ahead and stamp out everything rather than one card at a time. That way you know all your spacing. So let me just do that real quick. And I do need to stamp it versus just um, punching from there because those, that's my sample for Landa. Can't, can't mess these up. Okay, so I'm going to stamp the Oval B Body in Daffodil Delight. This is for a different card. On this strip of basic white. By the way, these are... I don't have these measurements on the um, blog. One and a half inches tall. I don't want it any taller than that because um, then when I punch, I'll have waste. And then I'm going to stamp the stripes and stinger on top. I'm going to do that again. So I'm making sure to leave a little space to the right of the oval for that stinger. And I have already turned the punch upside down to see what is the best direction and direction and left side or right side of the scratch paper to stamp these images on. Okay, and then I need petal pink for these wings. They're hearts, but in on all my cards, they're wings, I believe. So the large heart, I'm stamping it at an angle on purpose. And you'll see when I punch them out because that is how it fits in the punch easiest. By the way, on my original, oops, on this original here, I did get a little too close to the top. I don't even know why I did that, but don't go so close to the top. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. I'm trying to stay in, in camera here. Five. And then. On my other one and a half inch scrap, I'll get another one. And then let me just wipe off this stamp. You can use your chamois too, of course. And make sure I clean it on my scratch paper. And for this pull party heart right here, which is for another card, we're going to stamp off. So ink it up. Stamp it onto your scratch paper, that's stamping off, and then stamp it directly onto the card. Next up is black for these details that go on top of the heart. So I want black on all of the petal pink wings or hearts. This is one of those where I don't know which one's easier to stamp first, the outline or the solid heart. It might be easier for you to do the it opposite. I'm to figure out my camera placement on this. Keep being off screen there. Okay, then I'll clean this off and do do um the pole party wings. I feel like this is boring, but I'll be done with all this stamping for the other cards. Corinna, thank you. Thanks, Linda. I gotta get used to this workstation. Okay, pedal, uh, sorry, pole party on pole party. But that time I did not stamp off. So see how you can see it real good because we didn't stamp off. Okay, 
Then all that should be left are these little images here. We can do those real quick. All right. Oh, and these two Bs. So I need my black and these little antenna. So you're going to see when I punch these out why I stamped them upside down like that. Now I'm stamping for all four cards, but I'm only making three today and I'll show you the fourth one. And then same thing for this heart, why it is stamped. This small heart is going to get stamped upside down here. Now, actually, um, you could have gone with a skinnier piece of cardstock to be much less wasteful. But for my class, I just want to make sure everybody has what they need. You get a little extra if you're if you mess up. And I didn't want to have a small piece here and a long skinny. One. It's just easier. But on my own, I would get a skinny scrap to stamp that kind of stuff on. Okay, last but not least, these little, uh, so you can also stamp, so up here I stamped the oval image in daffodil and then stamped the black on top. You can also just stamp on whatever color you want your bee to be. We might be creative and have pink bees or purple bees or whatever. You can stamp just the stripes on that color paper and then punch it out. By the way, all these beads are going to get faces, but I do that after I punch. Um, okay, and then we will punch out. There's my face. Punch out these beads. So hold your punch in one hand, align with the other. You can squeeze while you are aligning to keep the paper from shifting, but don't really squeeze hard enough to punch to make sure you have it where you want it. I always turn my punch upside down and squeeze since I'm ready. Um, so the difference here in, it's like, why would you bother stamping the B in yellow on some and not on others? It does look a little different. You get a little white border with the one you stamped on white paper in yellow. And so it just depends on the look you're going for for your card. I like both looks. Honestly, I almost like the one on the white base better, but I like both. It's fine. And see how you would waste paper if you punched, if you had a wider piece of paper. Okay, then the hearts. You'll see the angle here. Again, they are hearts, but they are um, wings in this case. Ooh, I cut it close. Y'all, look at that. You got to be careful. Sometimes it's better to stamp, punch, stamp, punch. <gasps> Oof, that was the only one I got too close. So you got to pay attention to that also. But I probably don't, I don't know if I need that for today. If I need another one, I'll make it later. I'm making only three cards. Okay. This one. Now, see, too close, too close. This upside down heart, or the way I stamp these is upside down, is because the heart is upside down on the paper. Also, I punched the right side first because now when I punch these little hearts, you get waste on that right side there. That's how you punch out the antenna. It's with the heart. It's so cute. Like whoever, whatever artist came up with that was so smart. Sorry, I have to do this to see it and then try to put it where y'all can see. And then of course the heart is the same deal. The actual heart align it like normal but I stamped it upside down because that's how my brain works okay there we go I missed a couple of images but I can make them if I need them today let's put all these pieces up here how are we doing are we hanging in <laughs> thanks Mildred yellow on one side white on one side I'm going to have to find all my antenna. Boom. Some of these are just extra white hearts that didn't get stamped on. 
Uh, by the way, this is what the other heart looks like if you stamp it and punch it out like in a color, like red. It's a poppy, but I did not end up using that on projects. Okay, now we have all, hopefully, everything we need for all the cards today. Okay, so we're going to use one of the Daffodil Delight bees for this card, just because he's going to have the face, he or she, that is winking, mouth is open, other eye is open. And this one will be facing forward, so put the bee straight up and down and stamp that face there straight up and down instead of like flying to the side. This is the one that's going to get the small punched out heart. Oh, by the way, all the bees are going to get rosy cheeks. So I'm just going to use my petal pink dark stamp and blend bullet point and and just draw a cheek on either side of the mouth. Super cute. Then we need pink, petal pink wings for this bee. So I want this bee to be holding the heart. So I'm going to just bend the wings at like the point of the heart, kind of where the design stops on uh, the stamped black lines. Just fold it backwards. And then I should be able to go ahead and attach. I'm going to go over here to my bottom right corner of this mat and use my silicone sheet and put adhesive on because I don't want to get adhesive on this glass mat. On the back of the B, again, straight up and down, right above the greeting on that white rectangle, just like that. Then I'm going to add adhesive to this folded little corn. Um, corner and whatever you want to call it only of the hearts, which are wings. Like that. Fold it back and just place the wings. Where they need to go to be like they're coming forward like little hands. <laughs> you see what I'm doing? They're just bent forward. Nothing real precise there. Then I'll just see how they're flopping open, but I will add a Stampin' Dimensional to the back of the red small heart. Mini Stampin' Dimensionals are the best, in my opinion. And it fits perfectly there. And then I'll use that to sort of hold down these wings. So now your little bees holding the heart. Love, love, love knowing what to stamp for all the cards at the beginning. Oh, good, Marianne. <laughs> I'm glad you like that. Okay, I think that's it. We can put it together now. Oh, wait, I forgot the antenna. Oh, shoot. I did put antenna on all of my bees. So I was supposed to put adhesive on the back of the head of the yellow bee. But I'll just put a tiny, actually, I'm just going to put adhesive on the back of the heart. That's the same difference. The heart with the antenna. And I'm going to tuck it under there. I did mean to have antenna on the bee. Sorry. And they can hang off the top edge. That's how my other sample is as well. Okay. Then I'm going to place adhesive across the back center of this white piece and put the banner behind it. This soft sorbet, sweet sorbet banner. Soft sorbet. New color name. <laughs> and then again, I just want to remind you, if I had ink on this glass mat right now and I turn this upside down to put adhesive on it, now I have ink all over the front of my card or my cardstock. So don't do that. So I had to be careful when, when you have the glass mat. And then my designer paper on the left. So I just attach the white to the inside. Designer paper on the left flap. And then this piece is going to go right here in the center of the whole thing. I will, oh, my little thing is coming up. Make sure you secure it well. Um, okay, so I'm going to flip this 
you'll always be the one for me piece upside down top to bottom I want it centered on the card which has a literal center mark there but I only need adhesive on the back left half otherwise it's going to um, close seal the card shut when you close it this will glue it down there so I'm using Stampin' Dimensionals. I just use the way I flipped it upside down and placed it back in place. I use that as a visual guide as to how to keep my adhesive on the back left half. And then, let's see if that's crooked. This little guy goes there. And then I just need to add a bow and that card is finished. So that is my <laughs> uh, card. Let's add a bow. I was reading comments. I love that the silicone, I love the silicone tray that is included. Yes, this one here. Pat. Great deal. Yes, yes. And then let me see. Thank you, Kathy. I'm glad you ordered this stuff. Right? You'll have it on hand. Um, thank you, Susan. Thank you, Mary Jo. Thanks, Robin. Thanks, Corinne. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to make two, a bunny ear bow will be the one time I do it in slow-mo. Uh, two bunny ears. Lots of space in between. You can't have your hands right here where there's where you can't stretch out the ribbon. Lots of space in between. Ribbon is flat the whole time. It's never twisted and turned. Tail on one side. Keep it hanging from the roll if possible on the other for less waste. Uh, a rabbit ear in each hand or a loop in each hand. And then right gets crossed over the left in the front here toward me. And then push that right piece down through the back into the rabbit hole. And then you have that and you just fix it and make a cute bow. Uh, we don't, this bow does not need to be too large. It's a small to medium size bow for this card. And then I did not pre-place this yesterday because I had all that other stuff sitting here. But it's too far for me. I'm having to lean forward so much. So I got to figure out how I can bring the camera forward and bring this forward a little. Y'all, oh, killing my back. But that's just because of the video. Yesterday it was fine. I had it over on my other table. No problem. <laughs> okay, I'm going to use a mini glue dot. Bend the paper down. Find a dot. Fold, literally fold the paper. And then you have the same exact glue dot situation we had in the olden days. Press, pull, stick it on. That is card number one. That's a little cute fold. plenty of room to write a note. There you go, there you go. Thank you, Lori. Thank you, Pat. Thanks everybody else. Hopefully I didn't miss anybody. Corinne, thanks for sharing by the way. Thank you, Linda. Thanks, Tracy. The bee bundle is so cute, Cindy. I agree. Hey, Juanita in California. Good morning, Jennifer. Good morning. Hope I got everybody. Okay, that was card one. Let's move on to card number two. Should go a little faster since we've uh, pre-done some stuff. Okay, so card number two. Card two. We've got... Oh, I forgot to show you the original card, but same, same difference. Although I actually glued this paper down kind of crooked <laughs> and I couldn't peel it back up. You know, it's fine. It's fine. Um, okay, card two. We have a basic white card base. I'm just going to fold this in half with the bone folder. This will be portrait as well. Set that aside. And then the other pieces that will be in your packet are the next layer, which is Poppy Parade. So to save paper, you can always, if your an entire piece is just a layer in the back and it's going to get covered up, you can die cut or punch from it. And so I die cut the a label that I'm going to use on this card, a tag, I should say. And I duck at the label for card number one from that piece as well. So that's a way to save paper. So 
that's the base. And then what will cover that up is just two pieces of designer paper instead of one uh, from the Be Mine designer paper. So the top piece is a little shorter and it is the petal pink honeycomb pattern. And the bottom piece is a little taller. They're both four inches wide. And it is the white with the small bees flying left and right and little small hearts floating around them and little blue lines. Uh, the, these bees are not holding anything. Then I have this tag in um, Poppy Parade cardstock. And that tag is from, in case you don't know, Merriest Trees Dies. These are in the holiday catalog, but it is carrying over. It's a nice large tag. I do not remember if I put the measurements in the vlog. I don't remember, but it's two and a fourth by three and a fourth. And then it's got stitch marks on the edges. It's a gift tag, so it angles on the top two corners and it cuts a nice like fourth inch hole in it all in one. Uh, Mary's trees dies. So they are carrying over. I think they were on low inventory though, which means if they if that happens, they'll they will come back in stock. Click the wrong thing. Mary's trees. Yeah, they're low inventory right now. Um, so if you want that Mary's trees bundle, get it quickly before it goes out and then you have to wait till it comes back. Also, the bundle pricing will not be available after January 3rd. So I would just get that bundle right now if you want it in case it goes out and doesn't come back until after the bundle pricing is gone, if that makes sense. I love the Mary's Trees bundle, side note. <laughs> okay. Hey, Terry, good morning. Um... Okay, and then I punched a basic white, the bee's body, to make a word bubble. So pre-punch that. That'll be all in your packet. And then for this card, we're going to have the other bee that is stamped on Daffodil Delight cardstock. But this one's going to be flying to the left. So face on the left, stinger on the right. This will be the pool party wing, single wing. And there will be antenna. And we're going to put a face on there and then we'll stamp on the word bubble and the tag. Okay, so I do need scratch paper for this as well. Again, you can stamp on the glass, but you have to wipe it off. So I'm just not going to. Um, okay, so on my tag, I'm going to stamp the honeycomb image in Sweet Sorbet. Uh, and this this tag is basically a full-on copy from Alejandra Gomez. Let's we'll see how I stamp this. Um, but just the tag part, and then I turned it into a card. So I will show you the tag at the end. It was a little gift she gave some of us at backstage. I think I stamped it three times, but that's actually all that shows on my sample. So I'm just going to stamp it twice. So kind of top left, bottom right, but not hanging off the edges like I usually do. Okay, then we'll put the B is going to kind of go top right-ish. So I'm going to put the buzzy lines going from the bottom left corner up to the right in Memento Black. So I'll put the swirl... It like curly cues at one point. I'll put that toward the top, straighter line toward the bottom. Something like that. And then on my word bubble, it's going to say, you make my heart buzz. I'll stamp that in black for the landscape stinger on the right. And then... There is that small, I need my face too. What face does it have? Um, there is that small, really tiny fourth to eight inch or less hearts, three heart image that I'm going to add right above. You make my heart buzz in petal pink. That. 
And then the face will be the one with the eyes closed and smiling. Like it's just two lines for the eyes closed. It looks very happy. Not like my side eye be. <laughs> and um, I'll do that in black, but just a different direction to stamp the face. Just like this. So that the bee is flying the other way. And then you can add the little cheeks either side of the mouth with the petal pink stamp of brand super cute okay i think everything's stamped and ready to assemble have you heard anything about the abundant beauty mask currently unavailable not on inventory list i feel like i did hear something but i forgot what i heard anybody else abundant Oh, you know what? Let me look in the store. Hold on. Hold on. You can help, maybe. Okay, so in the online store, they say currently unavailable. Uh, Kathy, what Stampin' Up! has told us, and sometimes there's exceptions to this, <laughs> but what they have told us is if it says currently unavailable, it is coming back. So even though they are retiring, I believe, um, most likely the case is that Stampin' Up! already had some on order and they're coming in. So they'll get that order in, sell those out, and then it'll be gone. So from my understanding of what all they've told us in the past, that's what the deal will be. When they come back in stock, you'll have another chance to buy them. But you need to watch that inventory list like a hawk not inventory, just check it in the store. Sorry, I said it wrong. Um, and as soon as you see it back, order it before it sells out. Hopefully that helps, Kathy. Um, okay, so the first thing I'm going to do on this card is attach the two pieces of designer paper to this Poppy Parade cardstock. So the top one, the honeycomb goes at the top with just a little 16th inch border. And then just for the video, because I don't have stuff showing well here, I'm going to put this one, I mean, I'm flipping this upside down to place this other piece. Actually, I'll just move the silicone. How about that? I'm trying to keep in screen, but use my silicone map. Okay. Um, now, I'm not concerned about these holes and putting adhesive here because it's fixing to be glued to this white card base. Um, what your main concern here is how this looks on the bottom left and right you want the borders to be even do not stress if you have a weird um thing like this where these two meet because we're going to cover that up with ribbon i do want to reposition this though hopefully that makes sense so make sure the sides look good but we'll cover up this middle section where the two papers meet with ribbon or you could cover it with a strip of cardstock or something okay so that brings me to the next thing don't glue this down quite yet silicone sheet is great for this by the way um because you might have sticky back there we're going to take the sweet sorbet ribbon and wrap it all the way around and tie it in a bow to the left uh oh Ready just jumped up here. So I wrapped it all the way around. I'm pulling the ribbon. <gasps> Ow. Sorry. She also knocked over the light. Um, hold on a sec. Itching. Figuring out if I can keep working. Okay, there she goes. Sorry. No problem, Kathy. Okay, um, over to the left, I'm making the plus sign. That's what I was trying to say when the cat knocked the light on me. The plus sign. And this is that moment where you're like, hey, friend, can you put your finger there so I can tie a bow? But instead of our friend, we will just grab our reverse tweezers. These mine are from the Embossing Editions Toolkit. But reverse tweezers where you squeeze, they open, and you let go and they close. And you hold that close uh, hold that in place that way instead of someone's finger and then you can just be hands-free to tie a bow hello Brittany. i know you want to go on camera um and i always flip 
these kind of bows, I always flip the project upside down to actually tie the bow. I'm not talking to you, though. Cat wants to talk to her. Um, and anyway, then the bow comes out right side up on your project. You can flip it back at this point. Do what you need to. Of course, I left it tied to the roll. You'll see Brittany here. There she is. Um, uh, thank you, Robin. What was that? Oh, I left it tied to the roll. That is really messing me up. So that there is no waste on that one side. And it's really hard for me anyway to guess how much ribbon I need when I tie it around anything. So eliminates that problem as well. Um, our little tag is going to go over here to the right of the bow. So you can kind of just make sure the bow, see if it needs to be moved to the left or right at all before you glue this down to your card base. I might actually scooch it to the right a tiny bit. Yeah. And then move it back up here because it kind of slid down. Make sure it's covering my seam and then add more adhesive to the back and glue this to my card base. I'm using stamp and seal by the way. Whatever adhesive you use. That is my favorite though. Regular stamp and seal. And just trying to make it get that good border on there. Okay. Then for this B, I'm just going to add adhesive. Uh where's it go? On the back side, it's the Daffodil Delight Bee, so that I can attach the wing and the antenna. Then I'll add Stampin' Dimensionals on top of all that to attach to my card. I think I forgot to say this on the last card, but I'm, yeah, when I was putting it adhesive on the back where this banner was. Um, I just like to overlap, make sure I overlap dimensionals when it's, um, no, that's not, there it goes. When it's uh, where two pieces of paper meet, I like it to touch both pieces of paper at the same time to secure them down. <laughs> okay. And I'll put the little B up here to the top right of the tag. Notice I did not put dimensionals on the top of the wings. And then let me go ahead and attach this to my card with Stampin' Dimensionals. The tag, that is. I didn't end up tying ribbon through the hole in the tag because I already had this bow and I thought it would be too much, but I'm sure it would look cute if you did. And then my greeting, I'm also going to, my, my, um, yeah, greeting, the word bubble greeting. I'm going to attach with dimensionals. So it's going to be like this. It's going to hang off the left side of this raised up tag. So on the left back of my greeting, I'll put two uh, regular dimensionals. And on the back left side, I'm going to stack up two because this is one plus one is two height. That's it. That is card number two. So of course, if you choose to get this class packet free with your order, uh, we're going to cut everything for you. Cut, die cut, punch, emboss. You will just stamp and assemble. So any stamping and punching you've seen me do is what you'll be doing. And of course, tying your bow and gluing and whatever. Okay, one more card to make today. Card number three. I don't know where it is. Oof, I almost made a mistake. Okay, um, card number three is right here. We are using a Daffodil Delight card base. So for this one, I have I do have a score mark here. 
it is at one and one fourth inches. Um, I feel like it's hard to see in the camera or I have bad eyesight today, but it's right there. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and fold that backwards. And most likely we will score this for you in your kit, but it'll be in the instructions as well. It's going to get folded backwards, but then let me go ahead and flatten it back out and just fold my card base in half like normal. And then fold that one and one fourth inch score mark backwards. So it's similar to our Z fold here, but a, a smaller flap. That's pretty much the only difference. It's a smaller flap. So because it's more precise measurement and all that, we scored it on the cutting, the trimmer, instead of um, just folding it like I did earlier. Okay, then we have some pieces for this card. We have a piece of basic white that's going to go on the inside and be hidden here. And that, uh, again, measurements are on the blog. It's 11 a.m. Central. Then for the front, we have a piece of basic black and a piece of the designer paper, the sorbet with the white flight lines all over it to go on this front section here before the fold. Then when that's folded over, we have two identical pieces to go on the folded over front right flap. This is portrait. And then that front section that's exposed. And they're basic black. And then on top of those two strips of the designer paper that are the little honey jars. So that's the basic layout of this card. Punch on there for a second. And then I also have to finish this card is a, uh, a sweet sorbet die cut square from Stylish Shapes. That is um, measurements on the blog, Sweet Sorbet Square. The, I believe, decorative punch. I never can remember the name of that punch. It's not label though, because I tried to use label yesterday 20 times. Decorative, decorative circle. Decorative circle punch in basic black. And then a one and three fourths inch circle punch. So here's the one and one and three fourths inch circle. I don't know where I put the decorative. Is it? No. Y'all, I don't know where I put it, but it's a punch. And then a, I believe, seven eighths tall strip of basic white cardstock. So for this card, we're using one of the B's that obviously, because we're out of the other ones that I stamped on white. So I stamped the yellow, then I stamped the black, then punched it out. Uh, this one's going to be sort of front facing where the head is at the top, stinger at the bottom. So we'll put the face that direction. We're going to use antenna. We're going to use two pink wings. And that's all these others are for my last card, which I'm not going to make on the video today, but I'll show you. Um, Clean up a mess in front of me as well. So stamping wise, because I already stamped all that, I just need to add face and greeting. So I'm just using the regular old smiley face, two solid circle eyes and a smile. Memento black. So cute. I can like picture these emoji faces on so many other, you know, um, things besides the B. Just have to check sizing, like or uh, what's that called? Scale. See if it's the scale. Okay, this is a long skinny greeting. You're as sweet as honey. So we're gonna put it on this long skinny piece of white, right? And let me look at that way. Yes, right in the center. You're as sweet as honey. And then, so your as and the other as are like typewriter print, and then sweet and honey are, are cursive. I will take my scissors and just cut each end at an angle, the same angle. Easier than doing a banner, and it looks super cute. 
and I think we're ready to put this together. So I will attach this designer paper to the basic black, this large one. By the way, the back of the red I'm using is the other side is the honey and vice versa. So it's all from the same sheet here. Uh, this will be a real skinny border on this basic black and designer paper. And then attach that to the front left section. Again, there will be that tiny little Daffodil Delight border, 16th of an inch border. And same thing for these two pieces of designer paper. Attach the, hey Tammy, good morning. Carol in Connecticut, good morning. A strip, this is like a one inch strip. I can't remember if I said this, this is a complete side note, but it is a limit of one glass mat per demonstrator. So just FYI, like I can only order one. Um, they may, after that promotion is over, if they have any left, they'll probably sell those off. That's when I could get another one if I wanted one. Just like FYI, <laughs> the glass mat. If you missed that at the beginning, definitely go back and watch, see how you can get this glass mat and see all the features and everything. Okay, so got the two strips, the one inch strips of designer paper. Oh, I forgot to stamp something. Um, and they're attached on the folded over flap and then the exposed section. So it looks like that. I forgot to stamp the inside. I have to look at my sample, I don't remember. Oh yeah, okay. So I'm just going to stamp on the inside. It's real simple, but um, you could stamp. My greeting is going to be on the front, but you could stamp an additional greeting or greeting on the inside instead. More bees. You could get real elaborate, but I'm just using the hearts, the large and small solid hearts, and my sweet sorbet ink pad, which I lost. Oh, <laughs> I moved it way off to the side. I thought I was done. And so over here in the top right section of this rectangle of basic white, I'm just going to put top right the large heart. That's something on my, can you see that? There's something on my stamp. But it didn't come out too bad on the sample, so I'll leave it. But yeah, there's something on there. Um, did I stick this in the ink pad just now? My goodness. Um, one large heart at an angle there, and then two small ones around it. So one off to the top, I mean, toward the left of it, higher, one bottom right, a little lower, but all in that top right corner. Okay. Ooh, this video is longer today. My friend last week was like, I went to watch your video and you were. Like it wasn't there. And I'm like, well, I was finished. And she's like, your videos never, she literally was like, your videos never finished that early. I'm like, well, it did this week. Not today. If you come back, I'm not going to name names. If you come in right now, I'll still be here. <laughs> My videos are usually long, but last week I ended at like 1030. She was like shocked. Okay. This white just goes in the inside right of the card, but over toward the left. Okay, now let's put together this. So back of the B, I'm going to add adhesive on the left, right, and top. And that's where my wings will go just normal, left, right. Like this one's not holding anything. And then the little antenna, which I possibly lost. Oh, right there. Oh, I forgot to do the cheeks. We'll do the cheeks also. I learned that from Alejandra, my friend and teammate. She always puts the little cheeks on critters, and they do look so much cuter with the cheek. Little blush. So I am going to attach the white one, th one and three-fourths inch circle to the black decorative circle flat. Try to center it. 
And then the decorative circle to the Poppy Parade square flat. This decorative circle is like an uneven, I, I don't know how to say it, but it has a pattern on it. Anyway, you just might want to pay attention to where you put top versus side. See how it looks different here than on the left side. Of course, I could just turn it, but you just might want to pay attention instead of throwing it down and it being not even, If especially if you have like issues with things being even, if you know what I mean. Okay, dimensionals on the back of the B. So I'll overlap where the papers. Um, overlap, I guess. The B is going to be, so this square will go on my card as a square. But I want the B flying to the left a little bit. So tilted to the left, I should say, but right in the middle of that white circle. Greeting is going to go below that. I'm actually going to put the greeting on after I put this on my card. And so this is going to go, it's like a Z fold, like we said, but I'm only going to attach this square to this front, like one and a fourth inch flap. So what I did for this to make it easy on me is I figured out where I wanted it. I guess I want it centered. I feel like I want it low, but my sample is centered. Um, top to bottom, I put my fingers here as a marker, and then I just put two Stampin' Dimensionals below my fingers at the top and two above my thumb at the bottom. That'll be good enough. That's four Stampin' Dimensionals. I know they're not too high or too low because of the finger marking. And then I'll just center this left and right on this one, in, one and a fourth inch piece and top to bottom as good as I can. Something like that. And then we will add the greeting with, actually I did the greeting flat. Mm -hmm. Right below under the B but attached to the red and you need to make sure it doesn't hang off the right hand side or you're not going to be able to fit it in an envelope. So it'll cover up part of the bottom black and white circles. And then of course just add a bow and we'll be finished on this card. I do have a lot of extra samples I can show you from the B Mine suite and bundle. So hang out for that. As a reminder, I'm trying to cover up these lights here. <laughs> uh, don't forget to like, uh, give this video a thumbs up or yeah, a thumbs up, whatever. And that will get you, I'm sorry, that won't. Make a comment on this video. I can't keep track of the likes. That's way too complicated. Um, if you make a comment on this video on YouTube or Facebook live or on replay, you will be entered to win these three cards I'm making today. If you share this video, you will also be entered again, but you have to comment that you shared or else I won't know that you did that. Both are highly appreciated as are likes, comments, <laughs> follows, subscriptions, etc. Okay, I have tied a bow here with my Sweet Sorbet Bordered Ribbon. I'm just looking for glue dots. I know they're here somewhere. And this bow is going to go top left corner of the red square. Poppy Parade, to be exact. And that is the finished card number three. Card three. Thank you, Anne Margaret. So that's how it looks when you open it. You see the hearts I stamped there. You can stamp other stuff. You can put more designer paper on this left flap, more white that gets stamped on, or just more white to write your notes, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, so these are the three of the four cards you'll get in your free class packet this month. But it'll be mailed next month, but um, you know what I mean. And let's see here. Yeah. This is good. Let me take this off because this brand is um, messing with my aesthetics here. So let's cover up those light reflections. <laughs> those are three of the four. You want to see the fourth card? Of course you do. I hope you do. Here is the fourth card. I think it's super cute. Um, 
just a little simpler. We've got some black in there. I don't know if you can see, but this black will be embossed for you with a new embossing folder that will be free with a purchase in January or now if you're a demonstrator. It's called Softly Sophisticated and it comes with a stamp set. So it's free with a $100 purchase. You get the stamp set and the embossing folder free with a $100 purchase. Um, softly sophisticated. Here's what the folder looks like. It's just like a real fancy um, pattern made out of little tiny dots, yeah, interlocking lines, sort of. It's very elegant, very elegant, as it's called, sophisticated. It is sophisticated. Um, so we'll use that embossing folder there on that for you. Uh, this is that glass mat that I showed at the beginning or toward the beginning. Like you'll have to skip forward a little bit, but at some point I start talking about the glass mat. And then I have these um, other card samples I'm about to show you. And I was trying to remember, I was, oh yeah. So I used these two cards here as inspiration for this card. Uh, these are swaps I've received from team members mostly. I think it's mostly just all team members. So this is the card I made today. You can see the inspiration right here. Um, and I would have loved to just copy either one of these cards <laughs> straight up. But instead, I used my inspiration. Let me go back to comments. Sorry. Can't see. Love the fourth card. Thank you. Uh, who said that? Pat, thank you so much. Thanks, Carmen. Good to see you. Good morning, Carmen. Hey, Valley Chick. Good morning. Uh, and Margaret, thank you. Love the softer colors on that card. Talking about the left one, I bet. Yeah, that's like a different yellow. Maybe Lemon Lolly. Oh, Mary Ann made that one, and I think Linda made this one. Yep. Um, so there's my inspiration, and here's two more gorgeous cards for you to see. Let's see if they have on the inside. <gasps> Look at that. So she punched out the hearts. I don't know if you can see it on the video, but these are punched out, just cardstock, and you make my heart buzz. And it says be mine on the front. And this one, I don't remember, so let me look. This one is, goodness. yes, you'll always be the one for me. And she put those flight lines in a different spot. Super cute. And then, um, okay, so where did these go? What's next? This is the little tag that I received on a gift from Alejandra. Pretty much straight up copied it for this card. She had used uh, a different color. What is it? Pop. Oh, y'all know what? Literally, I've been saying this wrong color, I think, the whole time. It's sweet sorbet. It's not poppy parade. Any color I used is sweet sorbet, not poppy. If I said the ink, it's sweet sorbet. Y'all probably could read it on the screen, but sweet sorbet is what I used. I got poppy in my head because I've used I use poppy parade a lot. I used it yesterday on those other cards I designed, etc. She used poppy parade. If you can see here, it's a lot darker than sweet sorbet, but technically, sweet sorbet is the color in the um, designer paper. Realized, I think I said poppy about 50 times today. Um, anyway, isn't this tag adorable that she made? And of course, she used a little, this, not little, this large check ribbon, which you'll be carrying over. So you'll be able to keep getting that. Okay, so there's that one. Uh, this is a little uh, drink topper I have made for a team gift at our event. This is one of the swaps from April from that team event. She put Wink of Stella on these wings here. I don't know if you can see it, but they're Wink of Stella to up. Um, so super cute. I love that sample. This one from Robin. <laughs> so cute. I think she used the paper from the Zoo Crew on that black and white paper. Good use of that. For win. Thank you. Kathy, yes, that punch. I'm trying to figure out where I put mine. I'm going to look. Okay, I don't know who made this card, but it's gorgeous. Um, and I think they just hand cut those pieces there. I'm going to look again for that punch. I should have put it over here in my video area, but 
Apparently not. Yeah, nowhere to be seen. Nowhere to be seen. Hmm. Whatever me. Okay. A couple more cards here. This one is one, and I know I've shown y'all some of these before, if not all of them. She won our create our swap contest at our team event. And so check it out. And then it's just amazing. Yolanda made this one. And then when you close it, like it all lays flat and it's a normal size card fits onto into a normal size envelope. So Yolanda. Uh, oh, and these were the two I made from the Stampin' Up! event that, that they had. Um, but I modified this one. Honestly, mine's not as cute as theirs, but it's fine. <laughs> and um, it's still cute. See, these are the side eye. Doesn't this bee look angry? I think he looks angry. I know, girl, she is talented. Yes. This bee is even on a acetate sheet right there so it can be flying. So cute. Um, okay, so thank y'all very much. Place your orders. Get your free class. <laughs> um, hide these lights. I'll have to figure that out another time. Um, those are the cards in your free class. If your order is 50 or more, you get the free ribbon. Don't forget to use the host code so you get the free gifts from me. And um, this is that glass mat studio that we can get in <laughs> frustrated me. Exactly. Um, well, you can get this glass mat many different ways starting now. So any questions on that, let me know. Love each one. Can't wait to get this bundle. Yes, Lori. Thank you, Angela. I appreciate that. Love the pink one. I know, right? Petal pink. It does. It came out cute in petal pink. Very cute. I want to do bees in other colors too. I think that'll be cute, but I haven't, I don't have time to make an extra. Um, Pat, hey Pat Chat, thank you. Good to see you here. Janet, thank you so much. And Margaret, thank you. Susan, thank you so much. Debbie, thank you. See, I'm seeing people. I'm like, oh, I just don't think I've said hi. Corinne, thank you. Oh, here's Brittany, y'all. Did you hear her little meow? Um, I'm just checking comments now, but thank y'all so much. I appreciate you being here. Thank you, Robin. And yeah, so I guess I will, here, let me put the camera up so you can, uh -oh, maybe say hi to the cat. She's like, being weird. Um, anyway, hopefully I'll see you next Thursday, 9 a.m. Central on right here. Same channels, same time. And place and um anyway i guess have a great day it's december 7th so it's like what one day till christmas approximately <laughs> so good luck with all of that thank you landa i love it and here is Brittany. she i had a feeling she was going to be up here today by the way because she was following me around meowing a lot this morning which she hasn't done in a long time like what are you doing? What are you doing? Janet, thank you. All right. Well, I'm going to eat lunch. How about y'all? It's 11 a.m. Central, which is exactly my lunchtime. <laughs> so thank you. You have a great weekend too, Carmen. Uh, I'll see some of y'all tonight at Bingo, by the way. So I will see some of you tonight at Bingo. It's too late to sign up, but we're I'm looking forward to Bingo as well. And uh, yeah, have a great day. Bye. <laughs> Have to do it this way. Okay. Bye.